Hi, I'm Christopher Dahl, space and science fiction artist. Last year, I was approached by the Talos Museum out of Georgia to help them create a set of planets of the solar system for an exciting new outdoor kiosk display. I had to create all eight of the known planets, including the Sun, the asteroid Ceres, and Pluto. And for each planet, we had to have a, the planet and a backup copy. It was a big project, and I am thrilled to have been able to work with them on this, and I'm very excited to show you this behind-the-scenes look at how I went about making the planets. The museum needed somebody who can paint and build planets for them, and I've made a number of solar system sets for clients over the last couple of years, including this one for our good friends Rafi and Klee, who installed it with this great light in their dining room. But for this project, I was going to need to paint them a little differently from the inside out. I started with a clear 6-inch acrylic hemisphere that will provide some protection against the elements. And there I would make markings that would help me identify where all of the planetary features would go. For painting, I would start with the highest most features, which usually were cloud tops. In this case, with the planet Neptune, I was adding a lot of the bright cloud tops that you would see across the surface. From there, I would airbrush in the remaining layers, like in the case of Neptune here, with the beautiful blues to complete the planet. For planets that had more complicated surfaces, like the Earth, we took a page out of Globe Maker's tricks and cut these planetary maps that we were able to fold onto a shape that would fit on the outside of the hemispheres. The maps were printed in reverse, so I would actually have a good reference that when I painted from the inside out, would appear normal to the viewer. Just basically take the hemisphere, properly wrap the globe around the outside, and I had a perfect reference to work from. With the maps in place, I was again able to start working on the details from the outside in, painting the continents and the cloud cover, finally backfilling with an airbrush to get all of the ocean tones in place. This took several layers of blue to get the proper look of the Earth's oceans. Once completed, you ended up with a planet that was entirely painted from the inside out with a beautiful, clear, protective shell on the outside. As you can see here, I actually have four halves of the sun here and the reason for that is that the museum wanted two hemispheres that would be placed together on their kiosks one for each planet of the solar system plus the sun the asteroid Ceres and of course Pluto but because these are going to be in the elements there was obviously concern that maybe over time something would happen to them they might wear down something might break and they wanted a backup. So as part of the project, I was hired to produce not only one, but two copies of each of the planets. So what you see here are what is essentially the front and back of the primary set and the front and back of the backup. And here are the completed planets, starting with the sun, working our way to cratered mirror craters and details. Next, we move on to the planet Venus, enshrouded in clouds. This one was primarily an airbrush treatment from the inside. And then on to the Earth, our familiar home world, with its lush blues from the oceans and the continents and clouds. From there, we move on to Mars, rendered in all of its orange-yellow glory with dark patches, volcanoes, and canyons. Next, we have the asteroid Ceres, a cratered world with mysterious bright mountaintops. And next up, the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter, with its vast storms collecting as bands of clouds, including the great red spot. Saturn, the second largest planet of the solar system, is a pastel beauty. And next up, Uranus is the only planet that actually faces the sun. And of course, Neptune, which we looked at earlier with its beautiful blues and stormy cloud patterns. And finally, we move on to Pluto, most recently 
photographed by the New Horizons probe, showing its icy surface in a multitude of colors. I'll put a link to the video where I talk about each of the planets in more detail in the description below. I'd like to thank the folks at TELUS Museum for reaching out to me on this exciting project, and I'm so looking forward to seeing how they look once they're installed. Thank you, everybody. 